Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, I want to talk about a really fun topic uh, that's kind of been getting my like brain juices flowing. I was uh, thinking about some of the new products that are coming out in the game and how I think they are a really smart decision by Konami. And that decision is to give some of the most popular archetypes of all time new support, not just new support, because they do that all the time. We see new Brock Magician cards, new hero cards, whatever, every other year, every year kind of thing. But it seems like some uh, they've been leaning a little bit more into actually giving them like legit competitive support to get them at least into that solid rogue level. And I think that's a really smart decision. I think, plain and simply, Competitive players tend to spend more money on the game than casual players do. They have more investment in it because they actually have some like more obvious goals, whereas a, a casual player is just playing for fun. They're not going to be willing to invest as much money into it as a competitive player will. And so I think Konami should be should they should have the goal of getting more players from the casual side moved over to the competitive side, just financially, even just as a business. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. So, what I want to look at are the couple things they've been doing lately, and then I also want to go even a, another step further and say, okay, they've done these, now where can they go from here? What other archetypes would be in line after these? Um, I'm ready to be next and end up with a really solid wave of support, get them into that competitive level. That would be really cool to see. So, let's start off here with Blue Eyes Structure Deck. This is uh, probably the big one of the two, in my opinion, just because... I think the bigger thing here was Blue Eyes was really not that playable, um, and this structure deck alone, even if you don't think it's going to make them tier 1, I'm not there yet, they still have one card to be revealed, it could be something amazing, who knows, but assuming it's just like solid and like we have a good idea of where they're at, this deck's already going to be rogue again. And I think it's popular enough where, like, even if this deck's just like solid rogue, it doesn't have to be like super high tier, tier 2, tier 1, uh, it's going to see some play. And I think this is the exact kind of way you transition some of those casual players over the competitive side. So many people's favorite monster of all time, favorite deck of all time, is Blue Eyes White Dragon. Kaiba is one of the most popular characters in the entire like history of, of, of this franchise. So go from there. Um, and so with this structure deck, I think a lot of players will. It's the added bonus that it's also a structure deck, so like just buy three of these and you'll be almost ready to play Blue Eyes. Barring uh, Magia, but that's a whole other story. We'll, we can talk about that at a separate occasion. Like, just give them a Link 1. Blue Eyes has a Link 1. It's pretty solid. That deck's crazy. Next up, you have Heroes. Uh, now, this is just core stuff, and this just got revealed a week ago, so I honestly don't even have an idea of exactly how good Heroes is with this support, but just reading through the cards, I was like, that's a good card. That's a pretty good card. That's a pretty good card. Could be enough, especially since Heroes already were like in a much better position than Blue Eyes, so they didn't need uh, a huge, huge boost like Blue Eyes did. Um, but yeah, like Hero, one of those decks, like top three deck in terms of fan favorites. You know, it's been a little stale the last couple of years, nothing super new in, in a little bit, and also not been that favorable of a deck in the most recent formats. Maybe this is the kind of support to get them back into relevancy a little bit more. Start seeing hero players, right? Get them with the nostalgia bait. Get the GX lovers back in here um, with a little more with a little more hero support. I think that makes a ton of sense. So taking it to the next step, where do we land? So who's already in there, right? Blue Eyes is already in there, right? We just talked about them, and where's Hero? Hero already in there. Um, they already have their new support. That's what we love to see. Then we get to the next tier, which is should be next up. So these are the next tier of archetypes in terms of just popularity. I think Dark Magician has to go here. If you're going to give Blue Eyes this level of support, I think it makes sense. I think, and I honestly, not even just like um, just the popularity side of it, but also even just like canonically. I think it makes sense that if you're going to give Blue Eyes a really cool wave and make Blue Eyes solidly competitive... Give Dark Magician a wave like that. That it, the the show when it started was built on Yugi versus Kaiba. So let's get um, Dark Magician up there. I know a lot of people don't like those decks where you have to play your vanilla monsters, but it looks like Blue Eyes is about to be pretty damn competent, even with that restriction. I think this is. Uh, I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, next up, yeah, like even just in terms of the most iconic monsters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, like. If, if Blue Eyes White Dragon is Pikachu for Yu-Gi-Oh, then Dark Magician is like is like Charizard. 
Funny enough, the dragons don't equal each other, but you know what I'm saying. He's 1A and 1B. Works for me. The only other one I actually have in this tier is Cyber Dragon for me. I, 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 I've i never done a poll on this, and, and maybe my community is already like too into the decks that I'm into, so it might be a little bit skewed. Um, but like, I'm pretty certain when I look at the rest of these archetypes, I'm like, I don't know, man. It, going if After you get through these three archetypes, I'm like, tell me an archetype that you feel confident in saying has is more popular in in the in the Yu-Gi-Oh community than Cyber Dragon. I'm not sure I feel confident saying there is one here. Um, and this is supposed to be the list of like the other most popular archetypes in the game. So I think Cyber Dragon makes a ton of sense. This is also an archetype that has not gotten any new archetypal cards in five years. So they are due as well. Um, this deck's still not like terrible. It has a lot of ways to like combine with other archetypes, but I do still think it's it's due for another solid wave. It has a lot of cards in place already. It just makes sense. All right, and then we get to the next tier down, and this is going to have basically everything else. We can go one by one and in the in the order that I want, right? You can go by generation, right? So I think in general, the DM is where you want to start because. Um, if you're looking for nostalgia bait to pull where people started, the archetypes they had the, the closest feeling with are probably the ones they saw the earliest on. Um, and so you want to start with some of those GX archetypes, or sorry, the, the DM archetypes that aren't already on here. One of these, these first two, Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. So you get into the third archetype here, which is Red Eyes. Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Red Eyes is like maybe the third most notable monster from original DM. Makes a ton of sense to me. Um, you know, after Yugi and Kaiba, Joey is the third most relevant character in Yu-Gi-Oh! DM. There are a lot of popular villains, uh, antagonists, but they, they shift in and out. You know what I mean? They're there for one season and then they're gone for the rest, you know, rest of DM. Joey stays the whole time. I think Red Eyes makes a ton of sense here. Uh, plus, this is an archetype that people have been begging. Like, even as much as I've said, like, Dark Magician and Blue Eyes need to get up to the next tier... Red Eyes, people have been begging that Red Eyes could just get uh, support that Dark Magician and Blue Eyes have only gotten so far. And, and, like, to actually get them competitive would be really cool. They do have a handful of cards that actually are a little dirty. Um, they would just need to tie them all together. Um, next one is uh, Toons. For sure, this is the antagonist, uh, the antagonist archetype that everybody knows from, from original DM. I think that makes a ton of sense. I think a lot of people love the aesthetic of Toons and, like, how they take other monsters and kind of goofy them up a little bit and make them a little more you know kid friendly or just like you know what i mean They're, it's not a big scary dragon anymore it's not like a little cute dragon i think a lot of people like that aesthetic um plus obviously a pegasus super popular character i think this one makes a ton of sense as well although this one because of the way the tunes already work i am a little skeptical on like how they would get there but like give them another strong wave make tunes at least just rogue rogue level like where you could bring them to a regional and reasonably believe like you could top it and the last one for dm is harpies for me um yeah my valentine like she's she's kind of next up there in line as far as like the most relevant characters with with decks everybody knows uh i think this one kind of speaks for itself yeah but they're on the next tier down for sure from these two up here all right then you get to gx um getting the gx i think i start with uh you can put Neo Spatian here. Neo Spatian is weird because it's also a Jaden archetype, like Heroes, and sometimes they do sort of combine with Heroes, specifically like Neos. They have a lot of they have more synergy with Neos than other stuff. But um, even if they have to make it like almost become a separate deck, where it's like maybe they make some Neo Spatian cards that are good enough, but they don't necessarily combine with like the entire Hero deck. It's like a Neos Neo Spatian uh, deck, and you keep it more strict to that, but it's actually still good enough. That would be really cool to see. Um, just revamp that whole mechanic where, like, they fuse into their big guys. Their big, some of their big guys are decent, but they always have to tag out at the end of the turn. Maybe jump into that mechanic and really dive into that further, but make it, like, more modernized. So that way they can tag out on the opponent's turn kind of thing. Keep that rotating. I think I think you could find something there um, that could be cool. But um, it is still a Jaden archetype, which means, you know, it's popular. It just definitely falls behind regular heroes. Ojamas are another one, and this is another one kind of similar to Toons that, like, based on the mechanic of everything they do so far, I do look at this argument and go, how do they make it good? Maybe it has to be a Link 1. I don't know. I hate saying that, but, like, it may just be the truth. But that being said, 
a lot of people know Ojamas. Like, a lot of people like Ojamas. Like, they just love these little hideous creatures, and they're just funny. If they actually made them at least rogue playable, I think a lot of players would think that's really fun and want, want to try them out and actually be drawn into the competitive side again. And the last one here I have for GX is Crystal Beast. Um, kind of another protagonist, but it's later in the show, so that's why he falls down into this tier. But a lot of people like Crystal Beast. They love the design of them. They like the, the way that they mess around with the spell and trap zone. They were Centurion before Centurion. Um, but yeah, I, I think this one makes a lot of sense. All right, on to 5Ds. Obviously, Stardust. Uh, Stardust, as a card, has been played in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And even some other variants, right? With Excel, uh, Synchro Stardust. Um, but never as a pure on, like, deck, really. And you say technically it doesn't never really played a Stardust deck, but, like, Kaiba never played Blue Eyes. Yugi never played a Red Eyes deck. They just played the card. I think they could build off of this. They already have a handful of cards that are actually okay. If they wanted to push it to the next level and actually make a full-on, you say, Stardust deck, like, legitimately competitive, I think they could do that for sure. Red Eyes, uh, sorry, not Red Eyes. Uh, Rose Dragons are another one. Now, this one's actually funny because... Uh, Ro there's, I think one of the Rose Dragons is still on the ban list. Uh, Black Rose Dragon still a decent card as long as your deck can like make it in uh, early enough and like with the potential to extend past it. I still think that card actually still has some some legs in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and plus, they have the free reign of like you have White Rose Dragon, you have Blue Rose Dragon, you have Red Rose Dragon. There's a lot more colors, friend. You can go right, you know, yellow, orange. Uh, green, you know what I mean? Like, like there's there's so many more colors they can play with if they want to just expand the the onslaught of like main deck rose dragon cards and uh, and go from there. But uh, it would be cool to see because like we've only really seen them be played as an engine in other decks, not really as their own thing um, in the competitive scene. So I think that would be a really cool thing for Konami to to jump on. Uh, and then there is uh, Black Wings. Um, yeah, I, I like Blackwing's weird because it's like low key kind of popular, not just from the show. Like I don't think there's like a ton of like super heavy crow fans out there, but also because Blackwing's have been competitive before, and a lot of people say will say Blackwing's are their favorite like nostalgia competitive deck that they played a long time ago. But that being said, that means if they give them one more wave of good Blackwing cards, like those players might be like, well, that was my favorite deck when I was a kid. It's good again. Let me let me jump on it. Although this deck's already one of the better decks on this list, like modern, currently anyway. All right, into uh, Zexal era, we move to Utopia, obviously. Main character archetype. Honestly, it's funny because, like, Ryzeal's coming out, and, like, they could have just given Utopia the, like, level of, like, just the type of support to basically make them what Ryzeal's about to be. But Ryzeal's about to be an infinitely better X8 deck, but we'll see what happens there. Galaxy Photon, of course, another super prominent character in the show. Makes a ton of sense. And the last one uh, being DDD. Uh, as we move to the next one, the next... Jeez. Uh, 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 the next generation, which is Arc V. This is actually the only archetype I would put here. I hear all the time how popular DDD is. In my comment section, all the time. I believe this is actually more popular than Odd Eyes. Like the main character archetype, perform a pal, pe uh, uh, you know what I mean? Perform a pal, perform mages. I think this archetype is more popular than all of those. Uh, it, it's like low key, like super, super popular. Uh, so I actually think this one could make sense as well. The, the, the fan base kind of exploded for a second when we got the new uh, DDD cards a couple of years ago. They just got phased out super quickly. They got power crept so fast. And the last one's Firewall. The reason I think Firewall slash Code Talkers you could also mess with if you want. Um, it's just the most recent, like, anime that at least correlates to, directly to, like, the TCG and OCG, right? Not Rush Duel, which is an entirely separate game uh, on its own. So, I, I think Firewall could actually have some basis if they really wanted to, like, make a Link Vrain's archetype, like, hold up and still still be really good and competitive, uh, in the competitive format. I think that could be a thing. Um, but... You know, I, I just think this could work. Um, but yeah, this is kind of where we land here. I think the two big ones for me are still just DM and Cyber Dragons. Uh, and then from there, it like it only helps. You're not going to get as big a boost per like, you know what I mean, from any of these archetypes as these two here, obviously. But I think it makes sense. And I, and I know some people complain about how 
oh, but like they give so many more cars to these archetypes already. We need to spread the love. And I was like, I agree. But Konami's a business. We know their business. We know that's how they run some of their decisions and how they come up with some of the decisions that they do. This one just makes sense. And if this just makes the, the game more popular, that's only going to end up benefiting us in the long run anyway. We don't want this game to die because they just only support weird niche archetypes that small factions of players like and never touch the big stuff. And then the game dies because they don't have any popular enough archetypes that like, you know what I mean? Like, like interest in the game just slowly fades away, right? We don't want that to be the case. So that's where I land on this. I just thought this was an interesting topic. I just want to go over some of the other stuff that like I would hope Konami would at least consider and maybe have these maybe on their list that over the next year, two or three, they hit on three of the two or three of these archetypes a year, get them back up to modern like competitive standards and uh, and get a lot of players that maybe haven't been as interested in the game back into it and, and on the horse because the intrigue in the game has already been increasing but i think this can this can magnify that even more so there you go uh that's the discussion for today thank you so much for watching as always guys let me know your thoughts down below on this uh this list here are there any other archetypes i would think anime archetypes are really the main archetypes here that you could focus on i i thought about stuff like um like Burning Abyss, even though it's not an anime archetype, just as far as being such a huge nostalgic archetype for older competitive players that maybe have phased out of the game, but that's their favorite archetype of all time because they played it when they were playing competitively and having success, and now, boom, new wave of support, they're good again, jump back on the BA train, right, and get them back interested in the game. Like, I think something like that could also work, um, but today I was focusing specifically on anime, anime archetypes, but uh, yeah. If there's anything you think I missed, let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, just let me know your general thoughts on this topic. I'd love to hear it down below. I'll see you guys in the next one, though. Peace.